Can you hear that? Oh. Can you hear that? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Country Western vibe. Oh. Sorry for cancel. Yeah. yeah. Country and Western vibe. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. It's like hip hop meets country. Yeah. Slow down. I'm a cowboy on a steel horse I ride. Yeah. Country music. Yeah, that's my pride. Come from Oklahoma. I'm an Okie. Yeah, boomer sooner. Yeah. I'm a sooner. Uh. That's it. Uh, <laughs> I, I I never can get a good flow going. I thought that was gonna be my jam and everything. I was about to kill that beat and then you killed my. Well, well, you know, if you, I, I can't hear you. Now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Now you know, if you tell me you're gonna kill a beat, then then come on and just say, hey, let me let me take it to you. Otherwise, you know me, I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take the lead. So you gotta tell I me. I thought you said you were gonna be steppy. You were just gonna. You know, pass it to me and let me do my thing. Well, you know what? That's true. But I just felt it was more country music. Why? So I said, you know what? I think Dion's gonna let me take it because you know that's my that's my jam. And let me go take the lead. And obviously, no, I, I feel, rock and roll is your jam. Th- th- that's true. But other, other other music is my jam too. Like rock and roll is my jam. But also, I like a little country. So that's my jam too. You know, a li- a, what, who, what country music do you like? Oh my DJ? god, I like old school man, like Waylon Jennings, bro, and, and like uh, 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 Waylon Jennings, uh, Way, uh, Willie Nelson, uh, 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 Hank Williams Jr., bro. Yeah, I knew you were about to say the Monday Night Football asshole. Fuck that guy. Uh, that dude is good, bro. It's good. I, all the old. He's a racist sack of shit. All I mean, most country music stars are, but it's just, it's just good music though. I mean, it's no, really it's, no, it's not. Yeah, it no, is. No, it's not. Yeah, that's the no, best country not. music. It's better than the new shit. That new like polished shit where you like. <laughs> No, that new country music is 2000 rap. That's hey, all it is. Let me tell you. That's let me tell you. Here's how you, you can tell what real country music is. I always say you can tell how real country music is by the amount of black people in the audience who aren't working security. Like if you go to a country, if you go to a country music concert and you see by three, you go, oh, there's some real country right here. But if you go and there's like 12 black dudes working security and there's like 20 uh, black dudes walking around, you go, ah, this ain't real country. Man, this is the crap that's so out now. It, it's nothing but 2000 rap, fam. That's yeah. all it is. But, I th- the, but, but the old school guys who are new, like Luke Combs, uh, uh, Chris Singleton. Uh, okay, Chris Singleton, Luke Combs. There's another dude. Uh, oh, uh, Jamie Johnson. Uh, you you got to hear In Color by Jamie Johnson. Oh, my God. That song will make you cry. That's what I want to hear, In Color from country music <laughs> stars. <laughs> but it's good, though. It really is. It's not like you think it's it like, is. That's like taking Duncan lessons from a woman's basketball coach. <laughs> what? I'm not doing Why would I do that? <laughs> what? Ma'am, you do not know what you're talking Lisa about. Lisa Leslie's going to teach you how to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do is you want to buy. Say B, B69 and all you can do is rim grazers. No, thank you. <laughs> Why are you always a dogging on on uh, on WNBA, man? I'm not dogging on it. I'm just saying I'm not taking Duncan advice from a woman's basketball <laughs> coach, and I'm not listening to the country music from an. In- no, you don't get to do that. From from what? What were you gonna say? In color, I don't even I don't remember the person's name that you said. Oh, Jamie Johnson. That's no, it. the song is about yeah. like he's look at all these black and white pictures, but but they come to him in color though. It's all these. Yeah, black- I bet he's looking at a bunch of black and white. <laughs> this is where we used to hang them. This is where we used to kill them. This is where they used to work. Now they don't. <laughs> oh, I miss the good old days. Oh, I should write that down. <laughs> Well, you're in Georgia, so I'm sure you're feeling that a little bit more than uh-huh. that. Yeah. But then again, it's Atlanta. A- Atlanta's kind of better in a way. It's more cosmopolitan, right, than here. No, isn't it? Nothing worse. There's nothing worse than black rednecks. Let me tell you. Oh, well, you sit next to one every day when you're here. It, I it, know. <laughs> I got a pickup truck. I listen to country I know. music. So you're the worst. I'm, I'm a black trying redneck. To tell you. Well, I, 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 but I own it. We though. need to switch places. But I own it though. I, I own my shit though. I'm a black redneck all the way. But 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 I'm super pseudo black redneck you know what i mean like like i want to live in the country but only like, i love how you own it and then say pseudo well, you can't I, do both well no you yeah you can pseudo own it okay it's like no, it's like can. it's like this i want you know i want another pickup truck but not one of those pickup trucks that's like all glamorous like oh i don't want to get it dirty you know what i mean like that's why i like mine it's got rust on it like it ain't afraid of getting like you know a ditch and get dirty and muddy like who gives a shit it's got four hundred ten thousand miles on it you know and i want to live in the country but only like 10 minutes from a mall you know what i mean like i want to split that difference you know what i mean i mean i like that yeah you you don't want to. You don't want to cut out your creepy time. You got to be ten minutes from the mall. <laughs> <laughs> My creepy time. 
<laughs> why you call, Why would the mall be creepy? Why would the mall be creepy? Because what are you doing at the mall, BT? You're not jogging it. What are you doing at the mall? You know what? That's funny because you know what? I haven't. I, mean, I haven't been to a mall, mall, in, in I can't remember when. I'm like you I, and most of the rest of the country. Nobody goes to malls anymore. <laughs> you know what? That's true. Malls are kind of going uh, going out out of style, aren't they? The, it, the Amazon new- bent them over and took it. That's what they. That's that's why nobody goes to the mall anymore. You don't have to unless you want to get shot, <laughs> right? There's that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but the, the Linux Mall in Atlanta—that's the—that's the bad mall where people get shot at, right? The Linux Mall in Atlanta, isn't it the bad mall? I have, I have, I have no idea. Oh, that's right. You don't go anywhere, right? You go. I haven't got. So I went. I, I was. Uh, I went to go get some more vapes, right? And mm-hmm. I type in nearest tobacco shop, right? Right. And it's like, oh, three point five miles away. I'm like, sweet. I'm thinking it's a store. It's inside the mall. I'm like, I can't fucking go in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was so mad. I drove all the way to the, the shop, and it's inside the mall. And I'm just like, I can't go in there. <laughs> don't you? Don't you hate that when you don't know it's inside the mall, and you get somewhere you go, oh, no. damn it, it's a mall. You know? It didn't. It like it didn't say it on the Google map. That's what pissed me off the most. It's like, motherfucker, you could have told me. Yeah, you dude, knew you were in the mall. Yeah, just say mall. I mean, I, none of the reviews said it was in the mall. So it was. It's probably at a kiosk, right? Probably. Yeah. I, I, I didn't go in there. I, obviously, I like terrified of messing this up so yeah good for hey man good for you you're being responsible man i think that's great for you i mean honestly uh, not, i'm not gonna shut down this production yeah like <laughs> you're not gonna get me my name on that mm. how is it going by the way how's that going by the way it's great i gotta tell you a funny story so uh i don't know if i told you this already but um uh tammy roman plays uh denise in the show and she's like super COVID conscious uh-huh. And so uh, I'm watching an episode and I sat in her chair, not knowing it was her chair because there's just a bunch of chairs. Right. 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 And so she hadn't met me yet and they come off stage and she's like, where's my chair? And I like, uh, I think I might be sitting in it. She's like, oh, and so she gets one of the, the tech people to come and just Lysol the <laughs> shit out of this chair. <laughs> You'd have thought I had the plague and like that I was dripping the way she reacted to this, right? And so I was like, oh my God, I feel so bad. She hasn't met me. Well, actually before that, I, I when Miss Pat introduced me to her, but it was like, hey, this is my friend Dion. I stuck my hand out. We're not allowed to handshake. <laughs> Bro, the way she looked at me was like, "Is who is this motherfucker?" <laughs> so you're just fucking up left and right, bro. So my 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 very first interaction with her was awful. Yeah, she was like, mm, uh, "Give me an elbow, mm, <laughs> don't touch me," right? And so and then I sat in her chair and she lights all it down. So I was like, "Oh my god!" So I tell Miss Pat, I'm like, "I tell Tammy that I'm super sorry and that I I promise I don't have COVID. Like I get tested at least three times a week." So. Of course, Miss Pat being Miss Pat goes and tells Tammy, she goes, that dirty nigga ain't never going to touch your chair again. <laughs> <laughs> I go, Pat, what the fuck? She goes, I was just playing. <laughs> so a couple days later, I see uh, Tammy's, I'm coming back from the craft table and Tammy's walking to the craft table. We see each other and I give her this big ass wide berth. She goes, oh, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. We had a good laugh. That's about it. awesome. It was hilarious. That's yeah. dude. That's cool, man. I'm man. I'm so happy for you, bro. I yeah, really man. am, man. I'm I'm fucking psyched for you, bro. Good for you. It's it's, it's gonna be a fantastic show. They're recording episode 105 today. Uh, and they're doing a live broadcasting. So as soon as I wrap this up, that's where I gotta go. Okay, now what exactly? What's your role on the show exactly, specifically? I am a writer's assistant, so I do punch up work for the scripts. Oh, nice, nice. How's, how's, how's that paycheck look? How's that paycheck look? I'm not going to tell you that. Over is, the it, air, is it better than Sorry We're Cancel? <laughs> is it better than Sorry We're Cancel? <laughs> it is like um, almost a thousand times better than <laughs> Sorry We're Cancel. <laughs> if you know the Sorry We're Cancel, <laughs> hey, but that's for now. Wyatt, I'm looking at you, yeah. even though I can't see you. <laughs> but, but, but that's now. That's now, though. But you just wait. You just wait, though. We just wait. A good friend of ours told me to tell you hello, Tom Simmons. <gasps> is, he, is he working on the show? He is working on the show. Hey, man, Tom Simmons is one of the greatest writers around. That dude is a good-ass dude, man. That dude is a good, solid. Tell that dude I said, hey, man, I mean that. I definitely will. He was like, he goes, uh, he was asking me about the Pat Down podcast. I was like, yeah, I do a couple other ones. Uh, 
I do a show called Sorry We're Cancel with BT. He goes, oh, shit, you know BT? I'm like, BT is one of the first professionals I ever met. Like, yeah, I know BT. I got a show with him. He's like, oh, my God, I love that guy. His energy is amazing. He's, he's talking about all the money you made on cruise ships that you was holding out on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you might want to holler at your boy Tom Simmons before I run up in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> hey, all, all, all that money's gone, bro. All that money's <laughs> gone. That money left, what, the, 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 we, we got quarantine in March? That money was gone by mid-May. That money was gone. <laughs> you know that is when you're making money and you, you pay some bills off and you think, ah, oh, shit, I'm living the life. Next thing you know, what? What virus? Huh? What? And yeah. Then, and then it shut down. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I'm about to hit. That, them, them dirty feet, bitches. That's a habit. You to, <laughs> yeah. Only a working man can afford those. Yeah, I know. I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell Tom I said what up, though, man. I mean, tell Definitely. Tom I said what up. Is, so is he a head writer? Is he a head writer? He's a staff writer. Yeah. God damn. I love, who, who else writing on the show? Who else writing on the show? Nobody you would know. Oh, you ain't got to say it like that. You said it like, like a little. Yeah, this is because I don't, I don't know. Oh, like, really? Are, I, don't, I don't know these people. Are they cool to you? Are they cool? Yeah, everybody there has been super awesome. Man. Other than that first interaction with, with Tammy. <laughs> and we're, co we're cool now. Like, we laugh about it. But, Man, that's yeah. cool as shit. Ugh. Oh, my you know, God. You know, <laughs> I'm so happy for you, brother. I'm so happy for you, man. The I cast mean, is great, man. Uh, we just we're doing interviews on the pat down uh, with with the cast, man. So we had um, the the guy who found Miss Pat, John Rattler. We did him okay uh, last week, and uh -huh. then um, Saturday we we had the dad on the show. So we're like doing the cast. The the dad on the, the show, Jay Bernard Calloway, super cool dude, super awesome, very very talented, very humble, very funny, super nice guy. Big black dude from uh, Fort Lauderdale. So, yeah, I, I saw the uh, yeah I saw the uh, the pics on on the Instagram. Uh, yeah, a ball head dude, right? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. man. Yeah, okay, I, man, dude, I can't wait for for this to drop. I'm looking so forward yeah. to it. You know, I really am. How's the weather down there? How's the weather? How's the weather? It's better than what y'all got. But man, well, super... what? When the fuck did it start snowing? I mean, it's what two or three days straight, right? It's just, just shitty, man. It's shitty. I, I mean, I never seen it like this before. But I mean, dude, you got it bad. Chicago got it worse. My friend lives in Chicago. She posted on her Instagram. It was negative thirty four wind chill for like oh. five days in a row. Oh. I mean, that is that is impossible living. Negative. And I got a friend in Canada who's got it even worse. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's more north, but still. Yeah, man, this is horrible. I mean, I'm, I'm open. You know what though? I'm going to Arizona this weekend though. Going to Tucson this weekend. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Leaving Thursday, gonna get in Thursday night, man. I cannot. Get you some nice eighty-five degrees. Now I don't care what it is. It's gotta be better than this shit. I mean, so uh, I can't. It, it could be a, it could be a, 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 a like a, a forty-five. I'm like, oh, it's like, it's like summertime. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I can't wait, bro. I'm going back. I was there in November, and uh, so he he said, you know, blah blah blah, and I'm going back. Here's what he said. I'm a, well, he's not gonna watch it, so I'm gonna say. Here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, like he's no, his dad is notoriously. Cheap. When you show up at the airport, he's like. Uh, <laughs> Can we talk to you about sorry yeah. we're canceled? Or you, you, you can just keep on going. You're canceled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just make that U-turn and get back on that motherfucking flight. Yeah. Well, we get, because here it is. He always claims to be like, okay, let's put it this way. When you're, if you live in LA and you're a comic, you're always struggling because you can't get any money in town work and you, you go up and showcase sets or whatever. So you, can't, so you can't make no money. He's in Arizona. And he, so he can afford to, to lowball those comics coming in because like, hey, man, I'm so close to California. You guys can drive, blah, blah, blah. So... He said he can't find any comics. I, I, I was just here in November. Anybody that doesn't know, when you're a comic, if you're headline, usually you don't go back to at least another year so you can have new material, yeah. supposedly, or whatever. So he calls me up and says, he says hey, man, I, I need somebody uh, to cover. And I go, well, I said, yeah, I'll do it. But he goes, yeah, but the money's going to be this. And I go, well, listen, if you're struggling to get people in and, you, and you're right next to California... And you're struggling to get people in to headline. I mean, that right there tells you something's wrong. And so I said, but I said, fuck it, I'll do it. But for this price, and he goes, okay. So, but long story short, I'm going to Arizona this weekend. I'm so looking forward to it. I've got a couple new jokes I want to try out, and I just get want to get that angst out. You know, I still got that that uh, that capital. You know what happened at the capital? I still got that shit in me. So I, I can't <laughs> wait to get that shit out. I'm just gonna fucking just blitz a motherfucker. I, I figure in a month, BT, we got new tragedies happening every day, dude. I figure if I can go hard in South Carolina and tell those motherfuckers. 
fuckers at their pieces of shit. I can go hard in Arizona. You know what I mean? And well, they might bury your ass in the desert. <laughs> Ain't no deserts in South Carolina. <laughs> they got a lot of trees. <laughs> they, they got a lot of trees. But they didn't get me though, bro. So I don't give Come a Come on over here, boy. I want to show you where I saw Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, man, you no Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> His feet ain't that big, but we can pass it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Stuff so, some newspaper in there. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm looking forward to going to uh, to Tucson, man. I'm looking forward to doing. I just I'm like you said. I think it was your tweet, or was it your tweet? It was or your a tweet? Yeah, that's I it. posted it on Facebook too. But yeah, man, you you nailed it. I missed stand. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I, I miss it, man. But you know what I it's, like. I like about it is it's Thursday through Saturday, which is perfect. We get to do this before the week and then do stand up, you know, at the end of the week, just basically the Friday and Saturday. Dude, that, that's, the, that's the dream. Basically, I'm living the dream. I mean, I'm just not getting paid for it, you know, but I'm living <laughs> the dream. You know what I mean? I said I'm, I'm scraping by on a thought in my head when I'm asleep. Yeah, not but, quite a dream. <laughs> it, it's not, it's not, not, not a nightmare, but it's kind of like a, it's not like a daydream. Yeah. I'm daydreaming, you yeah. know, where yeah. the real dreams come at night. I'm kind of daydreaming. You know, I, I, no, it's, it's a day nap. I'm getting day napping. You know, you get a dreaming, you're napping like, oh shit, you know what I mean? It, it's like you gotta wake up because you're late. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm, I missed the breakfast special. Yeah, so that's what it's like, man. That's what it's like. It's like, I'm, you know, it's like I'm living it. It's just that it's gonna come and I can't wait. And by the way, I love their Everybody dropping the uh, the uh, uh, hit me up on a DM somehow to uh, they love the show and all that stuff. And Cindy hit me up. Cindy hit me up uh, for a couple of times on on something I forget. So it was kind of cool, man. It was really cool. Yeah, so. man. This show's growing. I, I love it. I like Dude, it. I, I really do, man. I mean, other than I mean, I, I wish people could see our, the text that between me, you, Wyatt, and Malik. <laughs> it's nothing but love, man. I love those texts. I was so mad last night. I'm trying to drive through a snowstorm. I'm white knuckling it. And Wyatt hit me up. Hey, man, could you do the final description? Hey, man. Man, I will. I'm just in a snowstorm right now. Like I want to. Think. Yeah, it's, it's not like you had a week to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he hits me a pump. It's like this. Uh, it's like all of a sudden you hit me up. Hey, man, I can do the show tomorrow at ten. You know, like, God damn it, guys. And I got to hit you guys back. How about ten thirty? Boom. And then all of a sudden, why? Hey, uh, I need a description now. And like, you know what? Fuck both of you guys. How about that? So it's it's nothing but love. I love it though. But still, you know, I mean, I I, I like the, the the Batman aspect of it. Like you put the bat you put the bat signal up. Hey, I can do it tomorrow at ten, and that's it. And we got to go, okay, let's make it work. <laughs> and then the white, the white hits us up at the, hit me at the gym. Hey, man, I can't get out of my house. How lazy house. of a superhero is Batman that he needs an actual signal to get on? Oh, shit, I got to clock in. Hey, <laughs> hey, man, he's a bill, he's a multi-billionaire. I personally, I think Batman one of the greatest people that's ever lived because he could be out fucking bitches, doing cocaine. He could be he like is. living the life. But instead, he, he chooses to fight crime. He, he's, a, he, he's a narcissist, but he's also a man of the people. I mean, he don't have to do that shit. No, no billionaire is a man of the people. But but if you think about, it, okay, if they, if they put a if they put a signal up in the air. Why can't they just text him? I mean, it's it's the it's the modern day era. Why can't they? Hey, Batman, we need you. Like, why do they have to put a signal in there? What if he's sleep? <laughs> like, and he misses. And he misses I think it. Batman is a projection of his his real self. Like he he solves quote unquote crimes because he commits so many crimes. And he's trying to equal out his ledger. What what crimes? Like like white collar crimes. Yeah, absolutely. Like what? I somebody keep... needs somebody needs to run the books like that. <laughs> hey man, honestly, if I'm a need bi- the FCC to call up his ass. <laughs> hey, if I'm a billionaire, I want to walk into my accountant's office and he's got a schmuck and and and, and, a, and a chef's hat. That's how much I want him to be cooking the books when I walk in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's what I want him to do. If I'm a billionaire, S- sweating like Emerald Lagasse. <laughs> <laughs> like like Bam! A, another tax break. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like an episode of Beat Bobby Flay. I want that <laughs> motherfucker to be like and putting the season on and this. Like, you know, don't don't have me like paying seven hundred and fifty dollars. I'm paying nothing. I want me to be paying as a billionaire, nothing. I want to be nothing. Paying taxes. See, and that's why you're the biggest criminal of them all. <laughs> who, who, me or Batman? <laughs> Batman. You don't okay. pay no taxes. Well, so he, of course he, there's so much crime in the city, motherfucker. You're not doing your share. Well, they, if Wayne if Wayne Enterprises was actually a legitimate, cool company, he would be employing all these people who rock, go out and rob every day. You can't tell me there's that many criminals in Gotham City. Well, well Gotham, there, uh, Gotham is mythic, mythically New York, isn't it? Or is it? Yeah, supposedly. Okay, okay. If if it is, well, then honestly, uh, well, then it should be more crime. It should be more crime. It should be Batman be getting beat up like he goes to Harlem. How come he never gone to Harlem in, in Gotham? Or, or, or the Bronx. I, I, I'll or give Queens. you a couple of guesses uh, <laughs> as to so 
one when Batman was created and why they weren't going to Harlem. <laughs> well, oh, well, they're they, they afraid of Batmobile to get jacked. Like, it was in the forties. <laughs> ain't nobody, ain't no white people rolling up to Harlem in the forties, billionaire or not, <laughs> with a cape on and, and a mask. <laughs> Alfred, I'm feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> Batman, why don't you like the African Americans, Batman? When I was a boy, my mother loved the black meat. <laughs> And that's why I have these scars. <laughs> I say, ain't saying Batman's racist. I'm just saying we only, they only put Morgan Freeman in the movies <laughs> <laughs> to, to, keep, to keep the heat off of him. That's why he's got one black dude working for him in Gotham. Matter of fact, yeah, that's right. That's by the way, that's right. So Batman is, is he's not really equal opportunity employer. No, nah, man. There's like two black characters in all of the Batman lore. But but. The first Catwoman was Eartha Kitt. Batman was mm-hmm. hitting it because Batman liked that dog meat. Yeah, man. I, I thought that was great. Eartha Kitt was sexy as fuck back then. Back then. Oh, my God, dude. And, and that was ballsy back then to put a black woman on TV in that role. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, but shout out to her. She's a she's a pioneer in the industry. Well, I'll, 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 I think anybody, and, I mean, who was the Branch Ricky that put her on, though, that took the chance to put her on, though? You know what I mean? The Branch Ricky. Well, you know, well, they had to, because, you know, they go, oh, Malik, boy. do you know who Branch Ricky is? Malik, do you know who Hell Br- no, I've never, Branch Richie. Branch Ricky, first of all, he don't, man, they don't even know who Pearl Jamie is. Why, why would he know Branch Richie? <laughs> Branch Richie. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's Lionel's brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of Lionel Richie's kids, Branch. <laughs> you know why they called him Branch? Because he always had to go get the switch. <laughs> Stop trying to sing like your brother and go get a switch. <laughs> Branch, Branch Ricky was the dude who hired, who uh, picked up Jackie Robinson. He he took a chance to put Jackie Robinson in the majors. I mean, for the Dodgers. He he figured, you know, if, if Josh Gibson should have gone, but Josh Gibson would have fought. He wouldn't have took that bullshit. So he, they had to get some dude who was like, hey, look, they're, they're going to call you all these words, but you just got to uh, turn the other cheek and just play ball. And so Branch Ricky got, uh, he had to get the right Negro, so he got Jackie Robinson. No, seriously. He had, and Jackie Robinson, people don't realize, he was a good-ass athlete. He was a good football player. He could have went pro in football, but he chose baseball and so they got jack robertson play baseball i mean they got him and they, and they knew what kind of dude he was he he would hit you know all the racial taunts he, he turned the other cheek and whatever and that's why they picked him up they knew he'd be only good. for the first two years uh, uh, really and then, and, yeah and then jackie was like man fuck these bitches i'm already here <laughs> <laughs> fuck y'all gonna do the fuck y'all gonna do yeah, yeah you know what he was he was like pretty much by himself though even his teammates didn't like him can you imagine yeah. that man just traveling that, that's the, probably the most grimiest shit about it like you expect it from fans but when the people that's on your squad trying to win games but you ain't ain't sticking up for you that's the shit that pisses me off the most okay but think about this though man i mean to be honest even to this day yeah things are better but even to this day things are grimy can you imagine back in that day though oh my gosh dude i mean i was I, I, and you know what the great i always say my impression i'll I, my impression of jackie i don't know if you've seen me do this bit i go my impression of jackie robinson at the hall of fame induction ser- uh, induction ceremony all right uh ladies and gentlemen this is uh we're going to do jackie robinson one of the greatest baseball players of all time jackie come up and say something jackie comes up he goes fuck all y'all thank you good night <laughs> <laughs> and see <laughs> That was my Jackie Robinson. Absolutely. I, that's exactly what I would have done. Fuck him. Fuck yeah. him. Especially fuck that guy. <laughs> and thank you, Branch Ricky. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, man. I mean, I, it, it's so frustrating sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say, it will frustrate the shit out of you if you actually go back and think about how all those people were okay with the shit that he went through. And in even to this day, I mean, what has really changed? Because think about it, he, back in the day, remember he, uh, people don't remember. I remember seeing the video, and I think he's bought him up. And maybe in the Hall of Fame ceremony, Jackie goes, "I won't be happy till I can look down at third baseline and see some uh, uh, black uh, third base coaches or first base coaches or even some, some niggas, niggas. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who look like me." And he said that speech. He went off, and literally, it was like, "Thank you, Jackie," and it was like this. Yay, we got another uppity nigger yeah. that we got to look at in bronze for the rest of eternity. God damn it. And and think about it. Nothing's really changed because look at baseball and look at football. Eric Bieniemy can't get a job being a coach. 
I mean, it did. Well, that, that nigga didn't score no points. So he ain't going to get a job now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday, Sunday didn't help him. Sunday didn't help Bro, at all. You should have dipped last year. <laughs> <laughs> he had this. You can't, you can't get your ass beaten and go, hey, can I get a job? <laughs> Aren't you the offensive coordinator? Oh, I'm sorry. I, well, the position seems to be filled. <laughs> and you know, people don't realize, man, that Jackie, one of Jackie Robinson's sons lives in Africa. He moved to Africa. He got sick of this bullshit and moved to Africa, and he's happy. And his mom said, you know, I wish she wouldn't have moved, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, good for him. And, and that's, a, that's the thing people don't realize. The, there's a new movement where for African-Americans. They moved to Ghana. Ghana is supposed to be a hot spot for American, yeah, African-Americans. They, they, they pay you to move over. Yeah, man. And and they, they talk to this guy and he goes, you know what? He goes, I love it over here. We have a spot where, you know, the American blacks live, you know, live, have a little community. And he goes, we get along with the police. <laughs> he goes, we get along with the police. He goes, we don't have the, that kind of stress that we live in America. And I was like, you know what? That yeah, Everybody's like, go back to Africa. I'm like, you know, that's not a bad idea, actually. If you really think about it, if, if we could get the infrastructure, at, you know, because sometimes I think that's what hurts at, at some, some African countries. And I think it's better than what we think it is. But if we can get the infrastructure and really – Really, really uh, uh, build it up. I think that'd be great to move over That's there. That's the honestly. last thing we need to do is Americanize Africa. <laughs> well, I mean, Black America. I mean, have more Black. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know what? They already do. They already rape Africa anyway. I mean, I know they've already been there. But so why not the Americans? Move Nobody over there? rapes like America. <laughs> no, 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 no. That China's been raping them. Russia. Russia, right? Yeah, you know what? Where Everybody. Do you, where do you think they learned it from? <laughs> Everybody Eng tries to be us. England. No, England. England was the original rapers. England. England. Germany. Oh, every country right. has raped we Africa. Took, we took we took England's level of country rape to a whole new level because yeah. we painted we painted stars and stripes on it and said it's not as bad as you think <laughs> when it's worse than you think. That is true. I will give you that one. That is so true. I will give. That's you how that. America is the greatest brand of all time. You think Coke is baller? No. <laughs> <laughs> Slap an American flag on something. Yeah. Because people instantly think, oh, that place is great. Like, no, motherfucker, we are some shady, dirty, you better ask the Native Americans about this place. Well, then, yeah, but you let let um, whoever tell it, and, they, and they'll say a different story. But if you really, everybody, to me, is a life hack. They say what they, you know, oh, America's the greatest place on earth. Blah, blah, blah. They're all like, freedom, and all that shit. But if you really broke them down, they wouldn't, they, they couldn't give you a reason. Like, this country is supposed to be better healthcare-wise for its people, and we're not. I mean, education-wise, we're not. I mean, what goes on? What, what's the lowest state in, in uh, education? I think it's Mississippi. I mean, it's horrible. I mean, there's no reason in the world why American children should go hungry. Like during COVID, during COVID, when they had to when they had to close the schools, that's the way that it's some kids. It's hard to read when you're eating your books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's true. Some kids can only eat uh, at school. So when they close the schools down, man, them kids were going hungry. That shouldn't happen in America. That shit, sweetie, that shouldn't happen in America. It really Really the, great, the greatest place on earth has hungry people and unhealthy people. And it's like, we're great for opportunity, but that's pretty much it. Like, you can come here and be a nobody and work your way up. But you got to get hella lucky. But that's pretty much it. We're not smarter than anybody else. We steal all the smart people from other countries and pay them better. I mean, remember we did with the Nazis? I mean, we seriously, we took their, their okay, scientists. Okay, look what they did with Jack. We were talking about Jackie Robinson. Yeah. yeah. Let's go get the one of the most talented baseball players out there and exploit his ass. Well, that's for money. I, but then again, no, but that, that's every sport, though. And, and like, uh, it was, uh, what was that uh, football player's name? He used to play for Miami. Brian Cox. But I love Brian Cox. What Brian Cox did was he played for Miami, and then he played for, ended up with the Bears. I think he finished mm -hmm. with the Bears. He goes, uh, he was on. Uh, it was before Sports Center. It was an interview show. I think it was. Uh, it was. Remember uh, John Firestone? Uh, uh, was it John Firestone? Roy Firestone on ESPN. He had an interview show, and then um, Chris Chris Myers took it over. And so Chris Chris Myers talked like this. And I remember one time he was, he was in L.A. at the Improv. He saw me go up. Anyway, I remember he goes. Um, he goes, uh, they're talking to Brian Cox. Shameless plug. Yeah, it's, yeah, I had to do that. He goes, he goes, uh, Brian Cox. Says, One thing about uh, the NFL is. They treat the white boys like niggas too. And Chris Michael, blah, 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 blah. You, 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 you said that word. I mean, it was so funny. He caught him by the right. He goes, the thing about the NFL is they treat the white boys like niggas too. And when he said that, man, everybody was like, <gasps> I mean, he said nigga on the air. And dude, it was the greatest shit in the world. I was like, what? you know, the person who booked that show was like, oh, 
<laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but it's how great Brian Cox is. It's how great Brian Cox is. Okay, when he was up in Buffalo, he went out and he came out uh, flipping, the, uh, flipping the fans off. I think they were throwing snowball. So he flipped the fans off, right? So the NFL was going to find him, right? So he countersued the NFL for, for, allow, for letting him work in a racial, hostile envelop, uh, environment. Mm-hmm. How beautiful is that? Dude, that, those Buffalo fans are crazy. Well, and you know what? Honestly, all fans are like that. I mean, all fans no, are like that. No, Buffalo fans throw dildos onto the field. Dildos? <laughs> those people, yeah. You didn't see that video? No, dildos? Bro, they, they were dropping rubber dicks on the field. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they were brand new. hope they weren't like that. No, I'm pretty sure <laughs> they were recycling those bags. Honey, get your dildo. We're going to the game. <laughs> I got my jersey. I got my tickets. Oh, get your deal though. <laughs> Just come. The only thing, the only thing, probably worse than that is when the Cleveland fans used to throw batteries. Oh, that's that's dirty. I'd rather have a dildo than a battery. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a dildo hit me in the fucking face than a battery. But then again, no. I mean, how does that make it past security? You know, uh, you know they wand. I'll give you. I'll Ooh. give you a couple guesses. White. Bingo. You ain't seen no <laughs> niggas throwing no batteries. No, I'm talking about the dildos. I'm talking about dildos. Oh, it's a it's a it's a rubber dildo. It's not like. But don't they look in your bag? Like looking through your purse? Like okay, you're good. Like I this mean, was. I think this was this was like pre nine eleven. So they oh. weren't doing security checks like that. So you can just carry a gun in the fucking state. I'm pretty. I mean, <laughs> come on in, buddy. If we lose, <laughs> shoot that nigga. <laughs> you imagine you go to a football game and they're throwing sex toys on the field and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they got glow in the dark anal beads. <laughs> the only person happy is the gay dude on the team that nobody knows about. <laughs> Hey, uh, where'd all those dildos go? They got a double-headed dildo. Hey, man, where'd, where'd, where'd all them sex toys go? I'll see you guys later. <laughs> it, said, it said, Johnson, why is your bag heavier than when we got here? <laughs> that one player who's on the down low, nobody knows about. <laughs> he collects them. <laughs> Can you imagine, though, you take old, like, guys, you go get sex toys and don't want to feel. <laughs> How funny would it be if you're like, Can you sign my dildo? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, on, on the balls, please. I'm, I'm, I'm still using the shaft. <laughs> you throw, you throw a I got this one signed by Jim Kelly. <laughs> Don't go change it. <laughs> this is my Thurman Thomas deal, though. He rushed for a thousand yards that season. <laughs> This one was signed from. This was named after Bruce Bruce Smith. I call it. I was Bruce. getting sacks. Speaking of sacks, could you sign the balls? <laughs> oh my god! I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they did that in Buffalo. I didn't know. Oh they did yeah, that. dude. They the. I'm telling you, Buffalo Bills fans are the craziest sports fans in America. That's Those what? motherfuckers are why they will go to a game. A negative 10 degrees with no shirt on in shorts and be loving it. Those dudes, those people are just wild. They, they were so happy when they made the playoffs this year and, they, and won the division. They had a great day. They, they had a great team and they have a great team. Man, I can't really see a weakness they have. They, they just happen to lose. I, I, if that game would have been in Buffalo, it might have been a different story, man. I mean, they got a great nucleus up there. Buffalo's got something going on, man. They, it's, a, it's a great team, and I don't think they have a weakness. So next year, I think next year in the AFC is going to be a dogfight. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a given for Kansas City. You know what I mean? I think it's going to no, be a great definitely year. definitely not, especially after they got exposed the way they – I mean, granted, they're starting – right tackles were out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tackles, like, so. Yeah, but you still got to make Brady, adjustments. Tom Brady, man, you got you to gotta, you gotta give it up to him, dude. As much as I fucking hate his guts, the dude is a winner. You know what? He's a cheating winner, but he's a winner. No, you know what, though, honestly? After a while – I and you know what? I couldn't hate him because I go – why do I hate greatness? I mean, I, I think, yeah, in the beginning, I was like, man, fuck Tom Brady. I was like everybody else. He's a cheater. I, no, but I was being a hack. I was like, man, fuck Tom Brady. Now I go, wait a minute. Why am I hating greatness? Okay, you can say he's a cheater, but at the same time, everybody, they got caught. They got caught, okay? I think everybody else cheats also. Or they're trying to do something, whatever. But Tom Brady, hey, if you look at his body now and when he first entered the league, that means he's trying to get better every year. There's a lot of quarterbacks out there who are just living off of whatever. They're not getting better. Tom Brady tried to Jamarcus he, Russell. Oh, my God. What a waste <laughs> of talent that piece of shit was, wasn't it? I mean, he was so talented. He, he threw, like, what, 70 yards on his knees just fucking around. He, I mean, yeah. he was built like a brick shit house, and he was lazy. I don't think he loved 
of football, and it, it, it just shows. So why why do we hate greatness? I mean, honestly, if somebody has proven themselves to go out and try to be the best they can and stick around as long as they can, they're not sticking around. He's trying to get better every year. So it's not sticking around. Like, some people are kind of like, you know, they wear out their welcome. Like, come on, old motherfucker, just retire. I mean, he's He kissed not- his 12-year-old son in the mouth, and he supported Trump. That's why I hate Tom Brady. <laughs> well, but, but, okay, and listen, <laughs> in fairness to Tom, you shouldn't be kissing your 12 year old son in the mouth. You shouldn't be begging for mouth kisses either while you're on the massage table. It's creepy. It's weird. It's gross. Oh, oh, oh I, I give you that. He's 12. Okay. But, and the, well, with the Trump thing, no, he knew Trump. Come before. on. He knew, Tr- daddy. <laughs> he knew Trump beforehand. And I'll give him this. Cause I heard, I heard him on Howard Stern talk about that. And he knew him beforehand. And then when he ran, so? when he, well, but then he, when he, and think about this. And, 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 and not just Tom, but remember, Trump was in all those rap songs and shit. And uh, he's come watching Mike Tyson fight. And all of a sudden, he runs for president. And all of a sudden, this new kind of dude comes out. And you go, what the fuck? And he starts saying all this racist shit. You're like, where'd this dude come from? So they that, knew it. That, they, wasn't, that, was, that wasn't new. No, but they thought he it was. new to us. They thought he was cool beforehand. And then so when, well, so when he yeah. got, but, but when he got dissed by Obama at that, at, that, uh, at that dinner, and then he came and started running for president, then that's when all that racist shit started coming out. And he started going, and he, he took that path and that's when we were what the fuck and that's when people turned on him because they were like we didn't know you were like this that's why he was in all the rap songs they thought he was a cool dude they thought he was and then this then when he started running for president that's when this that's when the the monster emerged basically think about it it's, how it's, many dudes it's did- easy to front when people are nice to you yeah, but but that's what i'm saying though right they didn't know this dude exists i didn't know he was like that but in my defense i never liked him i never i always thought this dude's a fucking cocky motherfucker i never liked him okay He's a sleaze ball okay, okay it's sleazeball, but I didn't know he was, I didn't know all the relationship was coming out, all right? Now he started running for president, and then all that shit started. I was like, oh my God, this guy's a piece of shit. And okay, but I didn't know that. I just didn't like him because he was a sleazeball, he was cocky. I didn't like that about him. But so Tom, in Tom's defense, I'm sure, I mean, there's why would you talk about black people when you don't have to talk about black people? So I'm sure when Tom met him, he's like, oh, that's a cool dude. Hey Tom, I think you're great. I would love to have you. And me and Melani, okay? They, they think he's okay, he's a cool dude. So then all of a sudden he's he's saying all this racist shit, and it's like Tom's like, what am I supposed to do? Not him, you know, he's not gonna be my friend anymore because he's saying all this shit. So, yeah, you're supposed to check him. That's what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to check your friend. Hey, bro, you making me look bad out here. Shut the fuck up. Or I can't be friends with you anymore. It's not hard. It's it's, it's a very simple thing to do. Like, hey, stop doing that or we're not cool anymore. I I, I think it's 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 not like Tom Brady needed him. It's not like Trump did shit for him. Well, hey, can you go pick up my kids? No, Trump's not doing that. <laughs> he don't even pick his own kids up. <laughs> I know. So it's like, what? What do you need that guy for? You yeah. don't need him for shit. Well, I think, but you're gonna you're gonna stand next to him while he's doing all this other bullshit. That's crap. Uh, I think Bill, Bill Belichick finally like kind of disavowed him after that, after that Capital City ride. I think he was like he kind of distanced himself from him. Uh, I, don't, I forget what it was. Was it a little too late for that? Yeah, like I said, they knew a different uh, a different Trump, and then like I said, after the election, they, there's no different Trump. That's who he yeah, always, that's he always was. But I think that part of him that got revealed to the public in a way that you go, "What the fuck?" I mean, when he to me, when he came out with the all Mexicans are, are rapists that line, and then he started talking about the Muslims, and then that's when I go, "Oh!" But I remember seeing no one talked about this video clip. I remember seeing two that no one talked about. He was like talking at some kind of luncheon or whatever, and he goes, he was talking bad about Obama, and he goes, and let's face it, he's black. I mean, and I and then the the video faded. I remember that. He goes, let's face it, he's black, and and then I didn't they they cut away from him, okay. And then he was president hit this time. He goes, he goes, uh, he he said Vladimir Putin called Obama the N word. I'm like, Vladdy, whoa. And then that no one really talked about that. And I remember that. I remember that specifically being on CNN. He goes, uh, Putin called Obama the N word, and I was like, I was like, Vladdy, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do you think we get along so well? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like this. <laughs> I guarantee you. You go back and watch that clip of the the. Uh that dinner he was calling him the n-word in his head as he was fuming from his ears oh, oh. after getting roasted by him. oh i love everybody it. else is laughing and trump's sitting there like this nigger here has yeah. no idea yeah man when i remember everybody looking at him and him just look had that look like mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. He, can't, he can't take it. It was like, man, we're just we're just teasing you, bro. Oh, he was. And he took that shit, but yeah, because he's a piece of shit. He's he was one of those seeding. people. Yeah, I just I, I love how Obama came in, and then after that, and then that's when the monster started, and then after that, and now look look at the movement we got now, and now we got yeah, this big upswell. His, his impeachment trials coming up. I, I think it's today, and it starts today. I think. It, is it today? I think it starts even today. Better. I even bet. Hey, honestly, and, and I'm being dead serious, man. He should be put on. This is this should be a trial. treasonous trial. It should be for treason yeah. because because it, for uh, uh, Charles Manson basically went to prison for the same thing he did. Charles Manson called for those people to kill Sharon Tate and everything and those those murders uh, in California. Mm-hmm. So he said the same. He and uh, that piece of shit uh, Giuliani. So Ugh. both of those guys should be hit up for treason and uh, and for inciting a riot. The, the, that's what they should be hit for. Both of them should, and and that's just and that's just fact. That's not even putting emotion into it. And th- those people who did that, the right, they should go to Guantanamo Bay. I mean it from the bottom of my heart because that's a terrorist. That's a terrorist. They, they, what Guantanamo they Bay is closed. Is it? Obama shut it down. Oh, I, I know he was talking about. It. I, I didn't think he did though. I, I didn't think he. I didn't think he shut it yeah, down. He, he did. He did. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Well, they should go to Leavenworth then. How about that? <laughs> that's fine with me. Go to Leavenworth in the middle of Kansas. How great would that be? Yeah, no, 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 uh, no sunbathing machines. I mean, no tanning booth. He, he, he pictured Trump with all the Aryan brother tattoos that he's got to get when he goes. To- <laughs> he got a Nazi. He got a swastika symbol on his forehead and shit. <laughs> How great with that! And and he's just white, white because he can't get to a tanning booth. Oh, he's gonna look great, bald headed, maybe buffed up. He's already obese, so maybe he starts hitting the weights. You know what I mean? They 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 buff him well, up. Seventy four year old dude. You know, it's just gonna start hitting the way. Well, he ain't got shit else to do. He might as well eat all that starchy food. You know what I mean? I mean, they gonna fuck. They gonna fuck the billions out that dude. What are you man, talking about? Man, ain't gonna, ain't nobody fucking on seventy four year old dude. Man, not 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 even for spite. Not not for fun. <laughs> I hope not. His wife's not. <laughs> Ugh, there's not enough money. I would in the love world. to know which Secret Service agent was banging Melania. Uh, you think? You think? You think they were? Oh yeah. You think so? Absolutely. You think so? <laughs> She spent like the first three months in New York. Man, you can get fired. He was that. In the- is that is that worth losing your job for? Absolutely. <laughs> so you can write a book about it. Yeah. You, you think? Absolutely. No, 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 no. I, I don't think she was, man. She, but she had to have somebody coming through hitting that shit. She had to have somebody coming through. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's probably a secret service agent. A black secret service agent. Make it even better. <laughs> you know, they act like they don't like brothers, and that one comes through. You know, remember when uh, Anna Nicole Smith was banging at uh, black bodyguard? Remember that shit? Anna Nicole Smith was banging her as a black bodyguard. He was he was hitting that Malik, shit. Malik, do you know who Anna Nicole Smith is? No, sir. You don't know what? <laughs> okay, I'll take it for Dion. What the fuck do you guys know? I mean, see, you guys know nothing. I mean, nothing. And the fact is, we live in an, in an environment now where you can find anything at the drop of a hat. You got Google. You got everything at your disposal. And y'all don't know shit. I'm looking her up right now. Look she her up like right a now. Porn star or something? No, she at one time she was the greatest Playboy, arguably the greatest Playboy playmate ever. Before she got fat, she honestly before she got fat, she may have before been before she the, married that super rich dude and got all his money, and that's why she got fat. No, she started getting fat, and that's when he because he, he goes because he couldn't really he was in that in the wheelchair, he couldn't do anything. All he wanted to do was play with her titties. That's even she said that he just liked to play with my titties, you know. <laughs> and she was there, she was a, a single mother who was hot as. Fuck, and she she did that uh, that uh, layout for Playboy, and I mean at- Cynthia's gonna love this part of yeah. the episode. <laughs> 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 Let's just be honest. At one at one time, she was arguably the greatest Playboy playmate ever. That 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 uh that spread of her, no pun intended, in that black and white, and she had that halter top on and then big ass titties. But she had a small waist and she looked like Marilyn Monroe. Dude, at one time she may have been the hottest chick. I mean, in Playboy history, I mean that's arguably even. I mean, even before the days. Personally, I like the days, the natural days, and we're in the seventies and that natural look. <laughs> if you just had big titties, you you were you were blessed. You were blessed. Remember that? So there, there's a there's a video game called Mafia Three where you collect like Playboy spreads, and so you can see all it's it's set in like the sixties and seventies. Yeah. And so you go and you collect all these playboys and you can read the articles and see all the old seventies naked girls. It's pretty hilarious. Oh, and and, and all their uh, nudity and all their entirety. 
Oh, yeah. And all their gl- bushy glory. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like that look in a way now. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still a modern day man, but. Reminds like, you of home. No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I like that 70s look. I, I mean, honestly, I think all women look better in the 70s. Because think about it. Black girl, black girls had that, 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 that big ass fro with them, with them big ass uh, hoop earrings. I love that look. When black, black women look better naturally, we had that big fro and, 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 and maybe with the pick in it. Remember, like, it looked like the three degrees from uh, Sanford and Son? Remember that? We want the three degrees. We want the three. <laughs> Remember that? They were, they were that in the nightclub. We want the three degrees. And and uh, and it was Fred, Skillet, and Leroy. Remember that? I love that. I know what you're talking about. And the other two people in the room with you have no idea what you're talking I don't give a about. shit. This is just me and you. These motherfuckers don't know shit. I do know Stanford. That's my uh, that's my uh, dad's favorite uh, show. Oh, you do know something. Look, look. Yeah. At, check out the big brain on my league. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't remember, remember asking you a goddamn God thing. thing. <laughs> but, but remember when uh, it, it was a talent show and, and, and the dude was trying to be a comedian. He goes, what's six foot five? 250 pounds, mean and ugly. And Skillet goes, yo mama. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that shit? <laughs> Remember that? And that bouncer goes, if you guys talk one more time, you're out of here. Remember that? But, <laughs> but he liked Fred because Fred walked off funny. He goes, he's walking, he's walking. Look at him, he's walking. Remember that? And they wanted a three degrees to show because Fred liked the three. And he goes, we want the three degrees. We want the three degrees. Remember that shit? Yeah, that was one. No, I don't. Okay, anyway, I think women look better in the seven. Black women look better in the seven because they had that beautiful fro and that natural look. And then white women had that that the feathered look or that the straight hair, which I thought was beautiful. And then Mexican women had that that that, that natural black hair that was straight. I mean, I think all women look better in the seventies, man. I really do. The seventies look, it was just beautiful. And then thanks they, for calling our audience ugly. We have- Appreciate. I'm not call, I'm not calling the audience <laughs> ugly. I'm just saying the '70s had a, a natural look. If you had big titties in the '70s, you were just blessed because they didn't have no augmentation back in the '70s. You were just blessed. Remember that? Remember that Ferret Foster poster where you saw her nipples? I mean, you saw like she was nipping through her bikini, and that was. And remember that poster when you're if you're in if you were. A Why kid, are you asking me if I remember the '70s? I wasn't alive. You, you ain't gotta say shit like that, man. You ain't gotta say shit. Make me look bad. Anyway, look up the Ferret Foster poster, and that shit. I remember that poster. I think I had it up in my room. I was like, oh, my God. And you could see her nipple. I mean, back in the 70s, that was a big thing. If you just saw a woman nipping in the 70s, that was a big thing. It was like, hey, how you doing, sweetie? Remember the 70s? <laughs> do you remember those posters in the 70s, sweetie? Do you remember, do you remember the 70s? You what? You How old are you? You just gonna ask her how old she is? No, I know because I'm older than I'm older than anybody on here. So I had no problem asking her because I know I'm older than her. Uh, what, what year were you born, sweetie? 78? Oh shit! You would know. You were two years old when in 1980 hit, so you would know. But but the 80s were a good uh, decade for women too, more natural. But they start getting a little plasticky. So I always I tell I'm trying to tell him in the 70s women looked the best they've ever looked. They were natural and it was a natural beauty. It wasn't augmented. What you had was what you had. Malik, hit the camera you know? so I can see who he's talking to. Uh, what did you say, babe? One second, Dion. Translate for okay, me, Wyatt. Buddy. Thank you, you baby. I appreciate it. I love that, man. She No, she stopped and talked to me, and it was great. She was born in 78, so she would know. You know what I mean? Because the, the 80s started the plastic look with women. You know what I mean? The 80s started the, with the, how you doing, brother? The 80s started the the the, the, the fake titties and the, and the big and the big hair and all that shit. And, and then black women started the, the, and what I'm trying to think. Did black women go kind of plastic in the 80s? Not really. I was, I was born in 84. I don't remember anything before 87. I'm trying to think. Oh, I, like I said, I know I know women had, had like the. I mean, I was, I'm trying to think how porn was. Okay, porn. They had. They. they well, that's how. <laughs> that's how I judge it. I love that you have decades of porn knowledge just stored away in your brain. <laughs> uh, let me let me hit my porn Rolodex. Uh, that was actually '79. Let me let me hold well, on. Well, <laughs> if you look at Kay Parker and Seika and Ginger Lynn and Amber Lynn back in the in the mid '70s to '80s, and then you know, and then uh, even black women back in the day with uh, with. Uh, what black porn stars do I know? Um, uh, yeah, that woman. And she, and, you know, like, they, were just, they were just. Cynthia's going to I know. Bro. I know she you is. can't name one. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. Uh, Nina DePonka. Nina DePonka. Uh, but uh, it was like, I didn't like the, the curl look. I hated the 80s as far as that goes. Remember Ready for the World? Those Jerry Curl motherfuckers. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, Sheila. Ah. 
Oh, oh shit. I, I, I hated that look. I just like natural, man. You know? I love that song, though. I mean, Ready for the World was an underrated group. That first album, Let Me Love You Down. Ooh. Remember that? <laughs> Remember that? Love down, down. Remember that? They would slip all over the stage, all that Jerry Curl juice is on, on the stage. If I'd have known you were going to do this today, I would have woke up early. <laughs> <laughs> Let me love you down. Ooh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, you know what's an underrated group back in the 90s, man? Mint Condition. Remember them? Yeah, absolutely. Dude, Malik, no. who's Mint Condition? You remember Mint Condition? I have no idea, but I'm glad you brought me up because we got some you remember Mint Condition, questions. don't you, sir? You don't remember him, sir? Uh, go do construction, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it right now? I got the would you rather questions, and I've been... Oh, uh, what, what, already? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Would you rather already? Okay. Would you rather? Go ahead. Would you okay, rather? Okay, I've been yeah, reading these like? in my head so I don't s stutter again. Okay. Okay. You've been <clears> practicing? <throat> practicing your words? Practicing. <laughs> Flashcards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 okay, don't make me nervous. Sound it out, Malik. Sound it out. Don't make me nervous. Don't make me nervous. Okay, first one. Why are you nervous? We do this every week. <laughs> you ain't even like a, you ain't, number 27. You ain't even featured on the show. You're in the background. How can you be nervous? You're in the background, bro. But they hear me. I don't want people to like, okay, okay, first one. You don't want people to know you can't read? Yeah, so read, exactly. <laughs> Who are you, you're, you're like the dude on tool time, you know? I mean, you know, you know, you know the neighbor, you can't see his face. You're even worse than him. We, all we hear Wilson. is a voice. And you get nervous. with we're, You're a voice. We don't even see you. Okay. I get nervous. God damn, Malik. I'm glad I don't play fucking sports with you. You nut up every time. Malik, shoot. <laughs> Boop, foul. Turnover. Ah. No, I don't get nervous in situations like that. <laughs> turnover. Turn God damn, Malik has four fucking turnovers. Luckily, we're up by 40. <laughs> okay, first one. Would you rather find your passion or the love of your life? My passion. My passion. Because yeah. my, my passion is going lead to me, lead me to money and it'll lead me to the love of my life. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me, if you, if you find your passion, your passion will make you money. And once you start making money, first you get the money, then you'll get the power, then you get the pussy. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it goes. So you guys, I'm just this. saying, you can you can meet the love of your life, but that don't mean she's going to love you back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. That don't mean she's going to love you. You're the love of my life. Well, you're not the love of my life. And if you yeah. don't, if can you, don't, you stop? Texting me, please. And if you don't leave now, I'm a, oh, I officer. Have a family. Oh, officer. <laughs> I got a family. Oh, officer. Yeah, that's what words black men ever want to hear. Oh, but, officer. But you're and, the love of my life. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> okay, the second one. Would you rather have an intelligent partner or a good looking partner? Oh, that's intelligent. A yeah, because I mean, you can be good looking, but if you're stupid, then you want to introduce nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think we covered that on the last episode when yeah. I was taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but that was just a uh, 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 like a, a booty call though. She she was just a good a uh, good for sex. She was yeah, like, she was sexy. She was she was good looking, but she was not intelligent. Yeah, she was, and that is a that is a turn off. Dumb as a bag of rocks. <laughs> it's like what are you talking about? <laughs> I'd have a better conversation talking to this wall over here. Than it's you. like <laughs> it, it would make sense if there were no washing machines. <laughs> and the wall's like, I, I bet that wall don't suck your dick. <laughs> okay. Would you rather know how the world began or how it will end? Oh, how it how it's going to end. How it's going to end. Yeah, yeah, I want to know how it's going to end. Who's, who gives a shit about the beginning of the book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to know the motherfucking end. Yeah, that would be that, good. Knowing the beginning ain't going to help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to know the ending. I want to know the ending. Especially okay. if we're close to the end. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I want to know meteorite, to, meteorite or World War Three. I might I have to change some uh, decisions. I, mean, I ain't going to work. <laughs> okay. We got 15 hours left. <laughs> I'm going to church. <laughs> and then I'm fucking everybody I see. <laughs> okay. Would Would you rather it be summer forever? <laughs> Wetting these two fingers, baby. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, baby, by, by the way, wear your mask. <laughs> we don't want to catch COVID these last 15 hours. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> okay. Would you rather it be summer forever or winter forever? Summer, man. You summer. crazy? Summer forever. Summer, winter sucks. Summer, summer, summer time. Yeah, we need 500 pounds. The groove slightly transformed. Okay. Would you rather it be able to fly or turn invisible? Oh, fly. Fly? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, fly. And them airline prices can be ridiculous when you got book last minute. <laughs> yeah, babe, but if you're invisible, you just sneak on, you know? Oh, somebody's going to sit on your lap. 
<laughs> well, not if you just stay, keep standing, you know. But as negative, you're, invi- you're invisible. You're not like they can't face through you. Yeah, that's, but at the same time, and what if you have a cell phone? They're going to see the cell phone just <laughs> holding itself up in the air. Like, what the fuck, you know? Somebody bought your porn on a cell phone. Uh-oh, and you put it down. It, it, it's easy to be invisible. Just put a mask on and be quiet. Put people in the pay you no attention. You put a mask on. So the mask the mask's not going to be invisible. You are. So I'm, ju- I'm just saying, that's gonna if you're creepy. a quiet person, you can, you can go through society. And, like, there's tons of dudes who never get pussy because they're invisible to women. Like, that's <laughs> why, why waste the superpower? At least you be able to fly out of your mom's basement to go get food. <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are you going? The Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> how fast would the flight be? Because I don't want to fly oh. slow. Oh, that'd be great. Hey, well, you're flying. So, how, I mean, you're not going to be slow. Even if I mean, but I'm just saying, if you could fly, but it, you can only go like three miles an hour. Well, fuck it, well, you just walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather be? Stuck? I'm gonna be late. <laughs> I'm on. <home. laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be stuck on an an island for eternity all by yourself or with someone you hate? What? With someone I hate. Oh. Somebody with somebody I hate that would give me something to do. <laughs> no, I, I'd murder him with a coconut. I'd something with saying you, something with the sleep. It, it would be like uh, it would be like Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner. You never catch him, but you keep planning anyway. <laughs> yeah, he he didn't really hate him, but he just wanted to get. It, but he never he got was it. hungry. Well, was he gonna eat him? Was he gonna eat him? Yeah, he, he, he was always putting a bib on with a fork and a knife, like he was gonna eat uncooked. Bird, like <laughs> Un- uncooked roadrunner meat. <laughs> me, me. Like I don't. <laughs> How can he never sued them? Uh, he never sued Acme as well. He, he should. Acme. Yeah, he should have sued Acme. Cause it wasn't Acme's fault. It was his fault. He kept fucking it up. He he kept ordering. <laughs> <laughs> and you think they not gonna send the product? You know what? That was the original Amazon. Acme yeah, was the original absolutely. Amazon. That way, it really was. Acme was the original Amazon, and he. And what I don't understand is why he kept fucking with them when they would drop anvils on his head. It's always an Acme anvil, like bro. No, the best when he felt way and he go, and he went. Remember that he fell and he goes. Remember that? And then and a little and a dust smoke came. Well, up. Why did he never try sticky traps, bro? This, <laughs> okay, the next one is: Would you rather not be able to taste or not be able to see colors? Not be able to see colors. Taste is incredible. Not be able to see colors. I mean, I can, well, like I say, what you look like is great, but not be able to see colors. I can tell you, you know, yeah. So, yeah, definitely not be able yeah. to see colors. Yeah. That's easy. I, yeah. Taste. Life would be boring if you couldn't taste it. Oh, anything. my God. Yeah. You might as well eat a fucking cardboard box. You can still box. live a full life if you're colorblind. They yeah. got new colorblind glasses now. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, that. dude, if, if you want to go down a, a crying YouTube rabbit hole, type in people seeing color for the first time. And oh. kiss your tears goodbye. Because really? you will cry your ass off at how happy these people are to see yellow for the first time. Oh, okay. Okay. Just imagine yellow's the first color you see. How disappointing is that? <laughs> I bet you eat a lot of hot dogs, though. Give me the mustard. Give me the mustard. <laughs> oh, okay. Would you rather know how you die or when you die? Oh. How? We did this one already. How or when? Ah. Uh, Definitely when. Because remember, we were like, we go to the restaurant, and order all this food, and like, yeah, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> 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 I'm dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when, not how. Yeah, when. Okay, would you rather have the ability to change the past or see into the future? Okay, ch- ch- see into the future. See into the, but I can't do anything. If I can see, oh, that's great, but I can't do shit about it. So you can change the future if you know what it's gonna be. My future or just the future of, 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 of the world? My future is that he said, see the future or change your past. So if I'm seeing the future so I can change my present. I, you can't. Why would I change the past? That's just going to ruin your present and your future. If you change the past, though, if you change your past, it does affect the future. If you change your past, if you change, if you can go back and change your past, then it's going to it's going to have a direct correlation well, why not with your just future. Change your future then. That's what I'm saying. I want to know what's happening at the end, not the beginning. The beginning's already come and gone. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I guess it makes you sense. Might, I mean, you, I like, mean, you've already planted that seed already from the past. You already got that wealth of knowledge, so that way, if you can see your future, then yeah, okay, I, I see that. I mean, because if you go back and change your past, you still have to live through it. Oh, I, yeah, I don't want to go through that <laughs> I shit. Wanna, I want to go yeah. through sixth and seventh grade again with those motherfuckers. Yeah, 
I'm with you. I'm going to see the future. No, you know, you don't want to do elbow titty in high school. Oh my God. <laughs> Sherry's big ass titties. Yeah. I don't know, man. That, Sherry's titties were great back in the day, man. 11th grade. Oh my God. They, I still feel them to this day. Yeah, that was nice, bro. That was nice. Yeah, that was nice. Okay. We still feel them to this day. Yeah, I can, man. That was, woof. Man, she's got to be, somebody has got to tell her about this because I use her real name and shit and I've been on stage and I, I think it's been like a, on a, a comedy special I did. So, She's got to know, like I, I'm, I'm, I got to get a cease and desist letter no, one of these days. <laughs> like, quit using my real name, BT. I'm sorry, Sherry. You still got the big ass titties. <laughs> 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 so this has got to get out to her. Our, small, our, our town was only so big, you know what I mean. So it's got to get out to her. So as big as them titties. <laughs> 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 Not as dangerous as them titties. <laughs> Okay, last one. Would you rather be magical but live on Earth or live in a magical land but be normal? Live in a magical land. But how magic is it? Like there's no racism and, and, and like I'm rich. Yeah, and wh sh what type of magic? Fucking card tricks or actual magic? I would assume <laughs> real magic, not no fucking... Like rabbit out of hat? Hey! Oh, this is fucking annoying. God, I hate living can you, here. Can you imagine the Kenny. normal dude living on a magical Kenny. world and that's his magic? Yeah. <laughs> Go let him in. That's my guest. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, man. But magical. Everybody I like else it. is doing real magic, and you're pulling rabbits out of yeah. a hat. Hey, hey, pick a card, any card. God damn it, I hate living here. It fucking sucks. They levitate, they levitate the card out of your hand. I'd rather really be back in Indiana where I get beat up by the police just, just for being black. This sucks. Yeah, let me get the powers, baby. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, powers, bro. Powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. That was the last one. Last one. Oh, shit, D. That's it, bro. Another one in the can. And another one. And another one. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I, sh I should be back in like a month or so. I am so. looking forward to it, bro. I, I mean it. I like how I, I miss I miss the studio. I miss, you know, yeah. chopping it up in person. Yeah. That's, is, that's, that's, you know what? This is fine. But yeah. <laughs> as a man, we got to say, as a man, you can't say, I miss you guys. Man, you gotta, I miss the studio. miss hanging out with you motherfuckers. <laughs> you got to say it like that as a man. You can't go, hey, man, I miss you guys. What the fuck did you just say? I mean, we got we to, <laughs> you know, man it up. Yo, man, I miss being in that studio, chopping up with you motherfuckers. We got to be like that. You know what I mean? We can't. I'm, I'm not one of those people who can't say how they feel. I do miss you guys. Aww. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We are 70s machoism. <laughs> yo, yo, D, yo, yo, miss hanging out with you motherfuckers. Fuck with you crazy ass. You know, that's, that's how I do say he misses another dude. I mean, I just remember being in junior college and uh, it was like one of the last days. And, uh, and I, I lived, uh, the wrestlers and the football players lived in the same dorm, you know. Were you a junior in college or you were at junior college? Yeah, at junior college. At junior college. Okay. I remember, okay. and I remember uh, the football, football, football players lived on the first two floors, the wrestlers lived on the third floor. And I remember one of the last days of, of school after graduation and everything, everybody's, you know, packing up their cars and leaving. And uh, dude goes, uh, yeah, he goes, and I remember this dude goes, hey man, you gonna miss your boy? He goes, hey man, you don't miss no dude. You just say, I see you down the road, but you don't miss no dude. And I always remember that shit. I mean, that's football player machoism to the T. He goes, yo, man, you don't miss no dude. You just say, yo, man, I see you down the road, bro, but you don't miss no dude. What a terrible <laughs> friend that guy was. Hey, man, you know, but back in the day, when it's 19. Hey, man, you going to miss me? Get the fuck out of here. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see, hey, see, hey, see you at the bowl game or something, man. Hope you make the pros. All right, bro? All right, then. You ain't going to see no... What happened? I missed my best friend. You ain't... Hey, man, back in the 80s... You know what happened? What? That guy did make the pros, and the guy said he missed him through the deal, too. <laughs> Hey man, sign this. Remember when we were in junior college and we talked about <laughs> if whoever made it, the other one's gonna throw a fake dick on, on the field. This is the miss you deal, though. Sign the sack. Because <laughs> if I would have had more sack, I would have been the, I would have been in that bed with you, bro. No, man, but but that was his eighties machoism, man. And there's something to be said for that. I mean, granted, a lot of that was, oh, but I, in a way, it was kind of funny. In a way, just I, just, I that's that's one of those things I always remember is him saying shit like that. You know, it's it's terrible if you can't express how you feel to another man and you can't well, well, things are, just accept those feelings. Well, things are different. It's terrible. Now. It's, things are different now, Dion. Thank God. Thank God, Dion. Thank God. And you. Thank, thank you, Dion. I appreciate that, man. I, give us another. Amen. Give us another bat signal and look forward to doing it uh, again with you, bro. To give my love Absolutely. to Miss Pat and everybody on that studio. And who knows, man, if I keep killing it in acting class, maybe I'll get an audition and maybe I'll be on the show. Seriously, that would be my that would be my dream. Right now, that would be my dream, man, to come in and do an episode with Miss Pat. I, I mean that, bottom of my heart. Awesome. I'll uh, not tell her. But. 
<laughs> All right, brother. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love you guys. All right, I'm BT. Catch you next week. I'm BT. I'm Deion Curry. And we're sorry we're canceling. Like we said about this time. Bye.